The less time people have, the more honest they are about their decision. That quote stuck with me as I unpacked and started using the iPhone 16 Pro Max on launch day. This is Apple's most powerful and advanced iPhone ever, no doubt about it. But here's the shocking part. Within 24 hours, I realized this isn't the iPhone most people should buy. In fact, the best iPhone for most people isn't in the iPhone 16 lineup. It's not even in the iPhone 15 lineup. To find it, we have to rewind two years to the iPhone 14 Pro. The iPhone 14 Pro has certain features I feel most people would agree are beneficial to have. First up is the ProMotion display. This was first introduced in the iPhone 13 Pro and has carried forward with every single iPhone Pro model. ProMotion is Apple's fancy way to brand a high refresh rate 120Hz display on its devices. This means that instead of the traditional 60Hz refresh rate, the ProMotion displays refresh 120 times per second, resulting in a much smoother visual experience. When you use a ProMotion display for the first time, the difference may not be so obvious. However, when you go back to using a display that isn't running at 120Hz, the difference will be immediate. Think more screen starter, lag, slower performance, even if that device is using a faster CPU. We stare at our smartphone screens all the time and having a ProMotion display gives us the best possible experience when looking at a screen. The iPhone 14 Pro also introduced the always-on display. The always-on display setting allows a dim version of your lock screen to stay visible even when your iPhone is locked. By glancing at the dim screen, you can check essential information like notifications, the date and time, and information in your widgets. In the opposite direction, you also have the introduction of a super bright display for outdoor use. The iPhone 14 Pro has a display that offers 2000 nits peak brightness in outdoor settings. This is extremely useful when using the iPhone in direct sunlight because it ensures you're still seeing optimal clarity and color on the display. Next up is the ring silent switch. Starting from the iPhone 15 and onwards, Apple removed the dedicated ring silent switch and replaced it with what they call an action button. The action button can be programmed to do many different things, including to act as a ring and silent switch. However, I think most people use their ring silent switch enough where it's worth it to have a dedicated button instead of being replaced by an action button where they may not use to its full potential. Next up, we have a camera system that is able to capture super high resolution photos at 48 megapixels, which is something that wasn't available on older iPhones. In terms of interface, you also get to have the dynamic island feature, which makes good use out of the screen space that used to be taken up by the true def camera notch in older iPhones. The notch has now been replaced by a narrow pill shaped punch out that houses the true def camera system for face ID. But Apple cleverly built Dynamic Island around this pill shape and it now allows you to check alerts and current activities such as voice memo recordings in progress, airdrop connections, and directions from apps. Next up, we have a whole set of features that I'm sure most people agree are essential to have, but they hope they will never have to use. Let's go through each one. First, we have emergency SOS via satellite. You can use emergency SOS via satellite to text emergency services when you're off the grid with no cellular and Wi-Fi coverage. Second, we have crash detection. This allows your iPhone 14 or later to detect a severe car crash and help you connect to emergency services and notify emergency contacts. Third, we have roadside assistance via satellite. This allows you to text for roadside assistance when you're off the grid with no cellular and Wi-Fi coverage. And then lastly, we have messages via satellite. So with iPhone 14 or later, you can send iMessages or SMS messages via satellite when you're off the grid with no cellular and Wi-Fi coverage. Now, there are so many stories out there of people being able to use these features to get themselves out of a bad situation. And it's one of the main reasons why I can't recommend any iPhone that's older than an iPhone 14. Next up is the lightning port. Apple finally made the switch over to USB-C with the iPhone 15. However, if you're a longtime iPhone user like I am, you probably still have a ton of lightning cables or lightning accessories that are still perfectly good to use. I think for most people out there, the type of charging interface probably doesn't matter too much. So an upgrade to the iPhone 15 or newer probably isn't worth it just for the charging interface alone. Right now, a refurbished iPhone 14 Pro with 128 gigs of storage from Apple is $679. Buying from Apple gives you the same one-year warranty that you would get from a new iPhone, all the manuals and accessories, a new battery and outer shell, and a new white box. iPhones are so advanced now that you don't need to upgrade every year. The new AI features on the iPhone 15 and 16 are exciting, but still in the early stages. It's hard to say if they'll become must-have tools or stay as cool extras that only some people may use. For example, the iPhone 16 has AI-powered photos and text predictions, but these don't make a huge difference for most people. The iPhone 15 Pro has a titanium frame, but it doesn't change how the phone works compared to the iPhone 14 Pro's sturdy stainless steel. The iPhone 14 Pro hits the sweet spot. It's packed with features like ProMotion, the always-on display, Dynamic Island, and a great camera system. Plus, at $679 for a refurbished model, it's a great deal for a phone that still feels modern. The iPhone 16 Pro may be the latest and greatest, but I think the iPhone 14 Pro is actually the smarter pick. It's powerful, reliable, 
and built to last without spending too much. So if you're looking for an upgrade, the iPhone 14 Pro is the one I would recommend. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think is the best iPhone for you? Let me know down in the comments.